Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com and right now I am going to show you how to hand felt your three-dimensional natural fiber objects. So, if you have an item that you can't really put in the washing machine to felt, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. And I'll give you some tips on choosing the right kind of yarn to use for this technique and also um, the tools that you're going to need to be able to be the most successful. So let's get started on this cool project. Okay, before I actually start felting, I just wanted to go over good yarn to choose if you're going to be hand felting. Um, both of these bowls are made from Knit Picks Chroma Worsted, and this is an example of the yarn not worked up. When you see it worked up, it's kind of difficult to tell the ply on this yarn. So I want to show you an example. This yarn is a single ply, which means it's just one length of yarn that's loosely twisted. Depending on which part of the ball you're on, it could be a little bit denser twisted or a little less. And that's kind of the beauty of this yarn when it's a single ply, is that you get variations. But another great thing about single ply is it's very easy to hand felt because it's so loose when you're working with your hands it easily will um, connect to itself. If it was a two ply where you would take two strands of yarn and twist them together it's a little bit more difficult to hand felt so if you're choosing wool yarn make sure if you're gonna hand felt it try to go for the more loosely plied yarn it'll be a lot easier to hand felt and a lot less work. So we're going to get the supplies together and show you how to felt these up right now. Alright, so to begin your felting project, what you're going to need is a bowl of hot water with dishwashing soap in it. Just enough to get the suds going. That's going to help with your agitation. Um, you can also do this part in the sink. So you can just fill up half your sink or if you have a big sink, your whole sink with hot water and dishwashing liquid. And then you're going to need either a bowl of cool clean water or you can just rinse it under the faucet with the cold water. Of course, your felted item that you want to felt. Dishwashing gloves or exfoliating gloves. Anything to be able to get your hands in the hot water and help with the agitation. Your hands are a little bit smooth to be able to felt that, so this is really going to help. These have little kind of grippies on them, so it helps with the agitation. And then a towel, depending on the size of your project, a towel to um, pat the water off of after you've rinsed it at the end. Um, you can also, if you are doing a flat piece, you're going to need blocking mats or pins, something to pin it to to shape it out. Since I'm felting a three-dimensional object, um, all I need is something to lay it on and to shape it out with, so I'll show you that when we get there. So let's start felting. Alright, so now I have my gloves on and I am ready to felt. So what I'm going to first do is just stick the piece into the hot water with the soap, get it nice and soaked up. And then once it's wet enough, I'm going to start using my hands in a rubbing motion to start felting this together. Now, some of the reasons that you might hand felt is if you want to control the amount of felt that your project gets and you get to see it more um, how it's felting up so you can stop when you think it's had enough. You can just keep dunking it and getting more soap on it. The soap helps to um, increase the agitation in the felting process. So I just want to swish it back and forth over every single part of my project to get it nice and felted. Another reason that you might hand felt is because it's a three-dimensional object. If you throw this in the wash to felt, it might felt closed and then you're going to be stuck with a piece that's unusable. Um, it'll also, if you have three-dimensional objects like the little bobbles that I put on this, um, you want them to felt up correctly so you can watch it better by hand felting than if you're doing it in the machine. So this yarn is really great, this chroma worsted, because it felts up really quickly. You can see already without a whole lot of work on my part I'm already starting to get felted. So I'm going to keep on working on this for a few more minutes and I'll come back and show you what we're going to do once you get it felted to your We are almost at the point that I am happy with the object. 
um, make sure that you're taking the extra time to felt around the edges because that is the spot that if you don't do it well you can very you can tell that this was hand felted instead of using maybe a washing machine where it would get it evenly. So I think I'm at the point where I'm happy with how it looks. You can just kind of dip it to get some of the stuff off, the uh, soap off, <laughs> couldn't remember the name of it, um, to see how it's looking in the different parts. So I'm liking how it looks, so now I'm ready to rinse it. I like to check the inside also, make sure you're happy with the inside of the project. So I'm going to stick it in the cold, clear water to get the soap off. And kind of just squeeze around the project. Then I'm going to squeeze out the excess. I don't want to wring it. You never want to wring your project. You want to just squeeze it out to get the extra moisture. And then you're going to use your towel. You can just wrap the towel around it and squeeze out all that extra moisture. And you'll see that these dry pretty quickly with how much water gets taken into them they dry quite quick. And if you're wondering why that wet sheep smell didn't come out even after all the soap that you put into it, that's just the natural smell of the sheep. It's not able to be taken out. So now what I want to do, because I put these little textural bumps in here, I want to make sure that I kind of poke them out before I set it up to dry so that they are visible once my project is completely dry. And because I put these bumps in, there's still um, slight little holes that you can peek through. I didn't want to felt them completely to the sides because then they wouldn't stick out as much. And I'm happy with that. If you're making this project, which is coming up in one of my books, it might already be out by the time you watch this, um, seven self-striping yarn projects to crochet then that's going to be up to you if you want them completely ground in with the sides. And then to dry this, what I'm going to do is grab a, um, just like a plastic cup or anything that you have lying around the house where you can invert this piece and kind of shape it on the cup. So make a little mushroom out of it. And I want to make sure that my sides are all even. So you can see that my sides are nice and straight. I don't, oops, sorry. You can see that my sides are nice and straight. I don't have um, wavy edges or anything. If I did, I would just pull that down to make it straight so that my finished finish project, once it's dry, it's going to stay like that. So I'm going to let that dry just like that and start felting my other project. So I'll show you how those turn out when they're all done. Alright, I have finished drying my bowl and it's all completely felted. It's got a nice shape to it and it's ready for use. I um, actually did the other bowl in the machine so I wanted to show you the difference and why I choose to hand felt things that are three dimensional in shape. So I ran this through the machine or the washing machine and this is kind of what resulted as you can see, I have some creases where the machine kind of forced the project to cave in on itself. I think it came out of the machine kind of like that. Um, so I have a couple creases in it. And I have very uneven bobbles. So you can see this side is almost completely flat. You can't really see the bobbles too well. And then I have other spots where it's kind of um, messily felted. It's kind of, it just looks kind of nasty right there, a little ugly. And then I have some that I would have preferred if they all look like this, where it's a nice felt and there's still a little bit of dimension to them. So I love machine felting for flat objects or objects where I don't have any three-dimensional attributes. Um, but when I'm doing something that I really want to control the shape of it, hand felting is what I always try to do. And you can just see, you know, side by side that there's a, quite a difference between the two. There's, you know, this did felt well in the machine. It just didn't quite felt the way that I wanted it to felt. So those, um, this is really 
um, good for these types of projects. So if you do have one of these kind of projects where you need to watch it and make sure it doesn't get, um, you know, misshapen, then hand felting is the way to go. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thank you for watching.